Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Wednesday, March 30th, 2022. Heading over to a service call. It's um, it's technically a recall that Daniel went on. Uh, Burnham Alpine, uh, I believe a 210. This is the one where uh, the draft motor, the inducer motor, the blow motor died on this thing. Um, we were able to get the motor a day or two later. We had to replace the shroud inside. We did a full maintenance and tune-up. Took apart the heat exchanger. Well, Daniel did at least. And we also replaced the relief valve. And the customer's calling, called, that it's dripping again. And I'm assuming it's the relief valve. And let's go see what's going on. I know based on the looking at the invoice when Daniel was there he did not replace the expansion tank um, I didn't read the notes of it but I know he replaced the relief valve so let's go head over to this job in Hewlett Harbor and see what's going on thumbs up comment subscribe and share let's get going guys Time, timer flash seven times BT system You ain't testing, you're guessing. Hi, how are you? Um, so the guy that was here to replace that part, that electric part for mm -hmm. the boiler, whatever part it is, that's fine, obviously. But he also, I paid an extra... He said he noticed a leak on the relief valve? Yeah, it's constantly still dripping. dripping. Yeah, we, you probably have a bad expansion tank, let's see. He, he said it shouldn't be leaking at all, and I had somebody come. You see, we emptied it yesterday. Look how full it is. Yeah, let's see where your expansion tank is. Back here. Oh, we got a big one. That's your problem. What's the problem? That tank. What about it? It's full. So how do we replace the tank? What? What do you mean it's full? The tank. It's an automatic expansion tank. Okay. It's a diaphragm inside of it. They don't last forever, so. When it's full, it's What's no the longer life on them? Eh, five, seven years. Yeah. How much does it cost? That's a great question, because this is a 60. I don't stock 60s. Um, why do you have a 60? Yeah, it's because you have a big giant system. But he wouldn't have noticed that? He wouldn't have been able to, to notice that when he was here? Normally when a relief valve drips, uh, we check pressure. So you have a pressure gauge here, which is reading, yeah, 30 PSI. What is the part that he put? This is called a relief valve. That's what he put, yes. okay. Yeah. All right. Now we know why there was always water down here. We thought we had some. No, because it also looks like, yeah, this, is, this, was, this, has, been some, this has been dripping as well, because it's green at the bottom there. And... Okay. I've never seen water from there. No, it's dry now, though, but... Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me get you a price on the number 60. And while we're talking about expansion tanks, check out this ST12. It's actually... The T is bending. Because the tank... Yoni, is full. Can you FaceTime with me? Wow. Look at that, it's bending. All right. So we have a defective X-Roll number 60. We have an ST12 that is about to give way, literally. Give way. And when it gives way, they're going to have a swimming pool in their basement that they didn't ask for. So I called around. I don't stock X-Roll number 60s in the truck. Come on, I don't drive around with a tractor trailer. Right? I called around. No one's got extra number 60s. Now, you could be thinking, oh, Mikey Pipes, put in 230s. Oh, come on. Is that a professional way of handling things? No, it's not. I do have in my shop an Amtrol SV30. Right? It's the, the floor mounted expansion tank for space heating. And we are going to install that instead. And I went to the shop. I picked that up. I had it sitting in the shop for a couple years. It was going to go on a job that got canceled. And I decided to keep it. Good thing because that's back order too. I got some threaded rod and a clevis hanger. 
for the new ST12 we're going to install. And let's go film the action. Stay tuned. Oh, I love that sticker. Okay. <clears throat> Turn the power off. Our pressure is very high. Here's my new extra. There's the 60. We're going to put it on the floor right behind the boiler. We're actually put it right here. God forbid we need to access the back of it. We're going to put that right there. And I'm going to take out the x ST12, replace this, hang it. I'm going to put a piece of threaded rod here and hold that up. All right. Let's start by closing this valve and carefully take off this expansion tank. All right. Let's see what happens here. too shabby. Luckily we had a sump pump right there. Dropped it into there. Now I could have isolated everything and used my inflator to pump that down, but uh, I didn't want to waste the time doing so. So as you can see, diaphragm failed. Time for the new one to go in. All right. She's slow to drain. I'm going to show you guys a little tech tip how to deal with expansion tanks so you don't get water all over your truck. Now, technically, I guess you could cap off that, but since I'm already draining into a source, I'm gonna remove the Schrader core from the bottom of the tank. And now, all the water is gonna drain. Just because I removed the Schrader core. I could also jam something in there, but it's easier to pull out the core. Pull out the core with the tool. This is the Klein 11 and 1. It has that straighter port tool right there. And you can see Daniel was here on the 8th of March. So about four weeks later, we're back because the relief valve is dripping because the expansion tank, no bueno. No bueno. Okay, let's get the show on the road. All right, I got a one inch black nipple coming out of the bottom of the extra one inch Vega female adapter. We have a slip reducer right there to three quarter, a 90, a one by, sorry, three quarter by half inch T for my drain, a slip reducer, and up on top, I added a union right below the already installed fall valve. So now I was going to press all this in and put the show on the road. Where's my machine? There it is. Uh, you be in the way a little bit. Let's see. Hold on. Sure, still 
good. Oh, but the one she sent me? Yeah. Sounds like a fun one. What do you mean? The description. All right. Boiler pressure is too high, causing the walls to sweat. Causing the walls to sweat? Causing the walls to sweat. Oh. Boiler well, pressure's too high. Oh, that's a good one. You'll have fun there. Yeah. Oh, no. PSI. Look at that. Let the start up. There's the other mic. We have the try to pull that up if we can ever so slightly. Carefully. That's it. Okay. All right. Let's close the valve, drain, and replace the tank. And let's make sure we know where the main water valve is. God forbid we need it. All right, ball valve, one inch. I was telling the other mic I had breakfast with U.S. Boiler this morning. They wanted to thank me for making such a great and educational video on the Steam Max, on that oil to gas conversion we did about a month ago. And they wanted to introduce me to the U.S. Boiler Alta. They make a boiler only and a combi. And their new Alta combi is 200,000 BTUs. We have a very nice American made combi. And it's at a nice price point, which is better than Bosch, much better than Lochinvar, and very comparable in price to the South Koreans. I'm really liking it. Check it out, guys. The Burnham Alta. It's very, very nice. Just like this Amtrol. Nice, nice and sweet. And let's take a look at what we did here. We moved the Sammy from there to there. Got a piece of threaded rod, clevis hanger. Oh, you know what we should have done? Put, maybe put a little electric tape on the copper so they don't uh, eat each other out. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I don't think I have electric tape. We'll have to get some electric tape. Do I have electric tape? Uh, you see electric tape there? No, tape. Negative. Yeah. All right, we'll get the bucket. Drain us down, replace the tank. A whole lot of pressure in there. Bam. What is the new tank? There it is. One hand. They almost got like three and a half gallons already out of that thing. Date manufacturer. No. I wonder if 1111. softening system. We're doing a whole house water filter tomorrow. In Garden City. 
boiler's running. Pressure is a little under 20 at 177 degrees. Very, very nice. And the tank is now empty. And a common question that I hear and that I see after I replace an expansion tank is why don't you take it out, get rid of the water, fill it back up with air. <laughs> um, listen, it's an automatic expansion tank. It has a diaphragm inside that it expands and it contracts. Once it expands and doesn't want to contract anymore, there's only one word for it, and it's called basura. You see how I teach you guys Spanish? Basura means garbage. Like South Korean Wall Hong Junk. Basura. All right, so let's recap. At the beginning of the service call, we verified that the pressure of that was being displayed on the tridicator gauge was 30 PSI, and the 30 PSI relief valve was dripping into this bucket. Looks like they made a homemade neutralizer right there, right? <laughs> Not necessary though. So the x number 60 that was hanging here was full. And as you guys saw, I disconnected it, got a little bit of water on me, and but my boots remain dry. And fortunately there was a pit right nearby. We put it into the pit, took the Schrader core out, drained it fully, and then I piped in the SV30, I think that's what it is, by Amtrol. One inch uh, mail is coming out of the bottom of it. I put a one inch black nipple in and reduced down to three quarter right away. Added a T with a drain and a union here to, in case this has to come out, yeah, you probably have to cut something, but at least if there's a union here, we can disconnect this and slide it out and slide the new one in if necessary, make changes, adjustments, what have you. On the domestic side, added the 3 8 clevis hanger, 3 8 rod. We move the Sammy from here to there, and this is the granite ST12 granite. This is made in Italy. Supposedly good, I prefer Amtrol, but this is what the supply house had. And the box did a little damage to it, but not just superficial, just paint from being in the box. Other than that, we are good to go with that. Nice Alpine, I think this is a 210. Very, very nice boiler. Nice sticker that Daniel put on there on the 8th. We're gonna update the service tag and call it a wrap. Now, a couple things that I didn't mention during this service call to you, the viewers, the community, and that is, number one, we have an indirect water heater. That can also be a cause of high water pressure on the boiler side, on the hydronic side, all right? Number two, we can also have a defective pressure reducing valve. That can also cause the system to overfill and give us a a condition with too much pressure in the system. An easy way to test the pressure reducing valve is to close the isolation valve before it and see if the pressure regains over a period of time. You can also isolate the indirect water heater from the equation by closing the isolation valves on the supply and return side from the boiler to and from the indirect. Now, I don't know if you heard in the, in the video, but she just purchased the house with her husband and they noticed right away that the indirect water heater that was there previously was insufficient and they ran out of hot water. I believe she said it was a 30. So nonetheless, we do have a brand new expansion tank. I'm sorry, brand new uh, indirect. So it's unlikely that the indirect has failed. What here, what has failed here is the extra number 60. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.